This time on the show, we continue hacking the airwaves with RF Cat, a USB radio dongle, and a little bit of Python lovin'. Then I'm setting up a little counter surveillance rig the easy way with a live Onion router distro, plus portable VPN clients for unprivileged users. What are your open source options? All that and more this time on Hack5. This segment of Hack5 is brought to you by Domain.com. Hello, welcome to Hack5. My name is Darren Kitchen. I am Shannon Morse. You're all professional today. Yes. You're all like. A robot. Are you a Cylon? Shh. I heard that you were a skin You're not job. Supposed to, you're not supposed to tell people that. Hello, blood and chrome. People are on the look. There are no skin jobs in blood and chrome. Or are there? Dun, dun, dun. See? Did you watch it? Yes, it's so cool. I love it so far. I, I love it, and I also hate that it's like in these little 10-minute no doses. I know. Okay, no spoilers, yeah. but it's no spoiler that kind episodes of, of, ten, of, uh, of Blood and Chrome are 10 minutes, and that just drives me crazy. By the way, if you haven't figured out, Hack 5 are huge fans of Battlestar Galactica, and so have been since the inception of the series about the same time that Hack 5 came out. So it's so very yeah. wonderful to see the fracking show back. You know what else I am a big fan of? Yes. People not stealing the word technolust. What are you talking about? We stole the word technolust. Shh. God, <laughs> oh. you're giving away like all the secrets today. <laughs> yeah, and you know what that? That's you just do it. You just did a quote from uh, War Games, which is even better because it kind of you know <laughs> nice. props if you know the 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 um the instance of that quote. But uh, but yeah, I mean technolust is just it's funny because it's like in like three frames or something of the movie <laughs> Hackers, which is coming up on 20 years old now. Oh my god! Just throwing that out there to make everybody else feel old that was born in the 80s. Huh? I feel really old now. That's pretty bad. And if you, if you haven't seen it, because uh, this is the case, we went to, I went to a Hack 5 meetup a couple years ago uh, in Toronto, mm -hmm. and this awesome kid came out. He was like 14 at the time or something, so we couldn't sit in the bar area, and Aww. his parents came. It was so cool. And he had never seen war games, never seen uh, Hackers, never really? seen... Um, uh, sneakers, Aww. yeah, it was so. Those cool. are like all the really good old school hacker movies. Well, they don't make good ones anymore, but yeah. No, they don't. And um, swordfish. So, swordfish. <laughs> Paul's calling out swordfish. <laughs> well, I found this uh, Wired magazine. I picked it up because it's got Brie on the front, and I was like, "Yay, Brie!" But you just like they're cheese. Not, they're not open source, anymore, which is really sad. Yeah. So, in here, who cares about the car, right? But check this out. Um. It's not. It's What's not this? sponsored. This what isn't. Is this? Here, let's cover that. Yeah. <laughs> it's that. How that funny way. is it that we've got a here, car sponsored right this week? Right there. Yeah. I'll do it right here may, on the screen. May see, cause technolust. Who, who decided to put that in there? Because no, that's they awesome, though. obviously watch either hackers or yeah. our show. Well, it's not technolust. really used that much. It's interesting to see the trends of those those words over time. I know. I just I opened it and I looked at that, and the only time you ever see that word is whenever we say trust your technolust. So you know why? Like, what? You know why? Because I have no idea how to end a show. And it was like, <laughs> let's just pick a phrase or something, you know? Well, it's a good slogan. Yeah. I think t at the time, Twit, and I don't know if they do this anymore, but they used to say, uh, another Twit is in the can or something. They still I do don't. that. Do they still? And then at the end of iPad today, mm -hmm. we howl. Well, I did on the last episode. Sarah went, oh, and I was like, do I chime in? OK, I guess I howl. It was the weirdest thing, but they, they do that at the end of every iPad today. Do they do oh. that on, on your VD show as well? <laughs> By your, club, no. Your vampire diaries, that is, <laughs> as I found out that that stands for now. Okay. Um, we should probably get into the hacking. I guess so. All right. So what are we doing today? Well, this I, is all you. I talked about this last week. I'm There's so, I'm so excited about uh, playing with the Torcon badge. I'm very proud to uh, have uh, our logo actually on it right next to this little software company from Redmond. I don't really know what they do, but, um, <laughs> but we sponsored the badge, and I, it's one of those things that I'm super excited about. I, um, I'm really getting into a lot of software-defined radio or SDR and the idea of, you know, it, it's actually kind of an extension of those things that we've been talking about a lot on Hack5 over years it, in regards to Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and other fun protocols like Zigbee and the whole idea that, you know, packets are packets and it's just like a different frequency or a different modulation technique. And so this is not our 101 on software defined radio because we're actually not getting into SDR in that terms today. We're going to kind of ease our way in with something a little easier and that's what I love about the Torcon badge. I talked about this recently. Basically, this guy here is 
I wouldn't say a software defined radio in the sense that like a, uh, a USRP from Edis or a uh, the forthcoming Hack RF or the um, or any of those like TV tuners that you may have seen that can do SDR do. It is basically a uh, an implementation of this chip from Texas Instrument it's called the CC1111 or 1110. It's a calculator. Uh, no, Texas Instruments makes more than just calculators. <laughs> they make some pretty cool chips. And this one makes it really easy uh, to do all sorts of different um, radio stuff. Basically, uh, it operates within 300 and 928 megahertz. It can do, for those that are, are curious, it does the modulation types, two FSK, GFSK, MSK, ASK, and OOK. And those are just different frequency shift keying, amplitude shift keying, on off keying. We're not going to get into the modulation stuff right now. But yeah, it sounds like a lot to cover. <laughs> suffice it to say, the beauty of this chip is that when coupled with the right firmware, uh, you can do some really amazing stuff very simply using Python. And so I'm going to show an example of that today. Uh, this is all put together with an awesome tool called RFCAT. And so here's RFCAT. And so RFCAT is over at uh, code.google.com. Uh, it's free and open source. Atlas and a bunch of other cool people put this together. And this is the client and the firmware and the source code that you can go ahead and put on a supported dongle. Now, the dongles include the IMME. You may have seen this. This is a uh, pink pager for, uh, I guess, for girls, because it's pink. But <laughs> you, can, you can use it as a boy, too. Hackers love these things because they support the, uh, the CC1111 chip in them. Uh, there's also the CC1111 EMK, which is a prototype board from, um, hmm. from TI. And then the Kronos uh, has a watch dongle to manage their watch apps or whatever. So that also Something uses like this. That. And now the uh, Torcon badge from Torcon 14 has a CC1111 in it. It already is set up with... The, uh, the RFCAT firmware is pre-installed. It also has a CC bootloader on here, so you could actually go ahead and change the firmware that's on it. Uh, you can program it with these, these pins right here and here allow you to like plug in like a good FET, which is a, a programmer. Um, so that's pretty cool. And basically, using RFCAT, you can do some really interesting things with radio without having to worry too much about uh, the other stuff there. I got Okay. Two hours left? That's interesting. It's saying so it's we've red, heard, but I have So we've heard about it. a bunch of cool stuff that we can do, but what are those cool things? Basically, anything within those 300 to 200 and, or 928 megahertz stuff using those modulations, uh, the RFCAT library makes it really easy to program some things with that. To give you an example of what others have done, here is an article from Andrew Nohawk. Um, about hacking fixed key remotes. Oh, so you okay. may have like one of these remotes for your <gasps> yes. keys and he does a great job of explaining uh, how using software defined radio um, he was able to you know sniff some stuff off of his key, how he was able to you know uh, decode the captured uh, uh, signal from his uh, transmitter and how he was able to use RFCAT to go ahead and <laughs> retransmit that. So it's basically the That's same awesome. concept. It's the same concept of a replay attack, yeah. which we would typically do in like, we're used to that in Wi-Fi, right? Like I see this interesting thing and it does that other interesting thing. I did this over at uh, my boy Jay's house where he had this Your like- boy Jay. <laughs> <laughs> well, my friend Jay, he has this really cool um, home automation system. Oh. And it works by uh, uh, over Zigbee. Oh yeah, yeah. But there's a TCP interface over the Wi-Fi and basically it's the, uh, we were able like, He's got a gate where, like, if mm -hmm. you send a certain code to it, the gate to his house will open. And I talked about this weeks back where... Is this how we got um, my boy D's gate to open? It, was it the same tool or was that something else? Perhaps. I'm not familiar with D. D? D-R? D Randolph? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, my boy? No. No, no, no. But uh, in a what did sense... What use? Well, so we actually just tied it to the garage door opener. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, But um, that, that was a fun episode. Go and check that out. But uh, in, in the sense that... Um, Jay's, his gate worked on Zigbee, mm -hmm. uh, there was this debug code to open it, I was able to sniff it off the Wi-Fi, and then I was able to use <laughs> Netcat, I think it was, um, 
an echo to just pipe the hex codes to it that it expected to see to open the door. And so that's an example that's scary. of a replay <laughs> attack where it's like if you can find the interesting bit and send it again, if there's no sorts of, if, if that's their whole security model is send some interesting bits. And in this case, as you can see on Andrew's blog, he talks about how you know he was able to actually, if I zoom in on here, you'll see that these are the waveforms that produce the unlock for it. And so you can actually see that this is a one, that's a zero, that's one, that's a zero. We're going to get into more of this as we get into SDR. But here's some source code to give you an example of this is just some basic uh, Python using the RFCAT library where you can set your modulation, you can set your frequency and, and your baud rate and other things, mm -hmm. and then basically use a little bit of uh, scripting foo with Python to do some basic replay attacks and all sorts of other fun things to and this the whole concept of this is to get you thinking about radio in more terms than just what we're used to with like Wi-Fi where the stack and all of the other underlying parts of the infrastructure are done for you. Yeah. We can do fun and interesting things and legally with uh, the 900 megahertz spectrum which is part of the industrial science medical bands uh, that the FCC gave us years and years ago uh, that include 5.8 gigahertz that we use for Wi-Fi and 2.4 gigahertz that we use for Wi-Fi. Uh, 900 megahertz here in the US, there's 433 in Canada, or no, 433 here but not in Canada. And then there's a lot of really low stuff as well. There's um, the loafers and midfers and hyphers <laughs> play with those. And we'll get into those later, but the point being, this can do fun, happy stuff, transmitting and receiving very inexpensively. And the reason why I'm excited about this badge in particular uh, I know you're going to be saying like, bummer, I didn't go to Torcon, I didn't get the badge, um, you know, I didn't get on the hack shop when we had like 10 of them uh, surplus, but uh, what's nice is here are the hardware design files, it is open hardware, anybody can go and grab a copy of this and build some, build your own Torcon badge, and given that all of this basically works on the concept of using that Texas Instruments chip, um, any implementation of it will do, whether you've got the pink pager or the Kronos thing or further hardware, which I understand is forthcoming. Mm -hmm. So that will be exciting yeah, where all of us can kind of like use this stuff because what I'm excited about using it for is um, store and forward messaging at DEF CON. So it's kind of like a oh, bigger really? overarching project I have. Huh. So what's the problem with DEF CON? Um, don't use wireless. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's don't use Wi-Fi. Don't use Bluetooth. Yeah. And now don't even use GSM. Basically turn off your computer when you go. But like it's your phone too. Yeah. And it's so frustrating because mm -hmm. if you're like, okay, so say like you wanted to tell uh, Dolcor 80, if you wanted to tell him like, hey, the party tonight changed and now it's at this casino, yeah. right? How would you tell him? Oh no, I can't find him. I don't want to turn on my phone and my phone can't send text messages over GSM. What am I going to do? Yeah. yeah. So what you do is you tell 10 people Right, right. You and tell hope 10 hackers. one of them actually sees him. But then you know that the message is going to be construed on the way over to Dolcor. And that's actually an example of store and forward, that game telephone that we used to play. Yep. The only problem with that is you're totally right. You tell 10 hackers, hey, when you see Dolcor, let him know this. Maybe you will see him at the party later that night. Yeah. And, like, and you're like, oh, cool, you obviously got my message that the party is now here. And he's like, yeah, cool, story, bro. I got 12 different messages and they were all different. <laughs> yeah, you know? exactly. So uh, I like the idea that using fun stuff that we're going to be getting into here on our uh, GPG slash PGP series um, that we'll be able to do fun store and forward stuff with uh, the 900 megahertz ISM band, specifically this kind of dongle, uh, in that uh, secure messaging at DEF CON. And I know this is kind of like out of band. Well, is that secure? Well, it, it, we'll put the security on the application layer. Oh, OK. <laughs> so it's like, I'll transmit a PGP thing, and then if we've all signed keys and everything is all happy, yeah. we'll get into that. Okay. Then it'll be fun. Uh, the, um, the, the difficulty, uh, of course, as I say that out of band, I mean out of like the regular bands we're used to, a Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and mm -hmm. cell phones. Um, it's still only a matter of time until people like, uh, do what they do at hacker cons and they, they become dicks and yep. they start uh, blo you know de authing the crap out of everything yeah, so that's always fun when you're trying to you know sell stuff, stuff at a convention and coordinate things yeah that's awesome. too, yeah that's always fun uh thankfully we've always been provided some um secure networks yes, for that so which is nice thank you for all of the conference um what are honors <laughs> that provide yes. secure networks for you know sponsors and vendors the and convention all that fun stuff. management 
So I'm really excited about showing you the possibilities when you take some awesome open source libraries like RFCAT and you put it together with cool Python scripts and kind of give you a taste of what's capable of being done with a, uh, a fun little USB radio like this. And we're going to be getting into setting this up in Ubuntu 12.04 here in just a bit. But first, we're going to take a real quick break. You guys know we are huge fans of Domain.com. They are the best place to go if you're setting up a new business, you know, showcasing your blog, talking about your cat, whatever it is to do, Domain.com is the best place for your next big idea. And if you're looking for a new domain name, consider getting yourself a .com. I should have gotten .com when I registered Hack5. Regardless, you know why? Because it's the original. I mean, it's the best. It's globally understood. It immediately lends credibility. And, uh, you know, no matter what, if you're into buying and selling domains, .coms have the highest aftermarket value and you can find a new domain name a new .com over at domain.com I know Shannon and I are crazy about them because they're reliable they're affordable they're so easy to use and they make it really fun to do business with them because they have an awesome social media presence on Twitter you can tweet them at domain.com and get this they're huge fans of hack5 they want to hook you up with 15% off their already affordable domain names and hosting. All you have to do is use the coupon code HAK5 at checkout to get yourself 15% off. When you think domain names, think domain.com.